Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Sunday, August the 29th, and today I'm going to try and decode some GOES 16 signals. So there's my dish, which we've uh, looked at in previous videos, and that's the Sawbird amplifier, and um, it's connected to the LMR 400 coax. And there's my laptop. I'm going to see, I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi over an Ethernet cable, so the Raspberry Pi is on the local area network. It's 192.168.0.12. There's my Ethernet connection. Let's just go inside. This cable's some pretty fearsome stuff. So here's my Raspberry Pi. I've got a Raspberry Pi 4B. I've got various images here. I've got one for open plotter, I've got a Raspbian full, and I've got the Go 16 on Raspbian Lite. And there's my SDR, RTL SDR. It's the new electric, it's the one that goes with the Sawbird. It's got the five volts on all the time. And I've connected the LMR. I've got it sitting um, under a weight here to make sure it doesn't move because it's a very thick cable. It'll move this around. So that's the setup. So when the sun uh, goes behind the building, I can't see my laptop right now. We'll do the decode and look at the results. Okay, it's five o'clock now, and we're going to run the uh, goes receive um, application. The sun is gone, so I can actually see my screen. So I'm using Putty um, to connect to my Raspberry Pi, which has got the goes to uh, running on uh, running Raspbian light, and uh, I've wired up. Yeah. Raspberry Pi 4 to the uh, local area network. So let's run the uh, GOES receive. And the objective will be to get the Viterbi error down to zero or very low. <clears throat> and that's an indication that we're receiving the signal. So let's see if we can do that. So I'll just go in here. So that's the command to get the GOES receiver working. So I'm going to execute that. There we go, spread that out. So, so right now nothing's working. Yeah, so I'm getting more than 2,000 errors on the Viterbi. If I can get that down lower, that means we're getting a signal. So let me go and rotate the dish. Okay, so I quickly want to go over the blog post. Um, there's the blog post that matches this uh, YouTube video. And remember, uh, in the a second video, we did a signal capture, and that's what we received using the RTL SDR and the Sawbird. And this is the HRIT GO signal. It's about 5 to 8 dB above the noise level. We said the noise level was around 100 dBm. Um, Originally, I, um, I guessed that the transmit power was 60 dBmi, and it looks like that was uh, too high. So based on what I'm seeing here in this noise level around 100, I'm guessing that the transmit power is probably around 52 dBmi. Anyways, we have a signal-to-noise ratio of about 5 to 8 dB. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a simulation with BPSK and see, you know, for 5 to 8 dB, what kind of error performance am I going to get? So let's just quickly look at the, I, I built it in Psychos. So there's my Psychos model. So what I'm doing is I'm using a random generator here, plus minus one, and I'm multiplying directly a cosine signal. This would be the carrier wave. And then uh, I'm adding additive white Gaussian noise. Now in the channel, you're gonna have more than noise. You're gonna have, you know, maybe some atmospheric distortions and, you know, lightning bursts and stuff like that. But just for simulation, I'm just using white noise. And, um, then on the receive end, I'm re-injecting the same carrier here, exactly the same one here, and that'll bring back my baseband data. Uh, I don't have a transmit filter here. I'm just using a low-pass filter here to simulate all the filtering. So that re recovers my, my data, 
And then what I do is I uh, com sample and hold. I, com I compare um, I compare the received waveform right in the middle. Uh, if it's greater than zero, I call it a one. If it's less than zero, I call it a minus one. And uh, then what I do is I compare the original transmit signal with what's recovered, and I, I get the bit errors. So let's just quickly run this and see what happens. I got a fair amount of noise just to show you what's going on. Put this down here. <clears throat> so if I look at this first screen here, this is my transmit carrier. Actually, just for simplification, I'm using uh, one kilohertz for my carrier, and my data is at 100 bits per second, just for simplification. So um, if you and there's my noise, and that's the noise added to the signal. If I uh, expand here, so you see there's a transition on the bit that, that goes from 1 to minus 1, and you can see a 180-degree shift uh, on the data there. So that's the BPSK. And uh, this is the receive. So there's... Uh, <clears throat> There's the receive signal um, after it's been low pass filtered. This is the um, receive signal plus the noise uh, before any low pass filtering. So it's got the, um, <clears throat> the plus and the minus component. The minus component will bring the signal down to baseband. It's also got the twice the component, the twice the cosine frequency there. So when you've low pass filtered it, that's what you get. And then when I sample, I sample in the middle of the bit so you can see that this gave you that pulse, this gave you that one, et cetera. And then um, this last waveform there, um, <clears throat> this is what was um, recovered, this is what was sent. And you can see here, this is the bit error rate counter. So here we've got our first error, let's look at this, you see? So this doesn't match that, there's a one there and that's a zero. So you've got an error there, everything's the same there. And then you got some more errors there. So that's basically how the, um, the Psychos model works. So back to the blog post then. So I did that simulation, and I made a table just to see. Uh, I don't. I didn't use the uh, EB over NO. I just used uh, what I could see on a scope. So I just used 20 log of the peak to peak signal over the peak to peak noise just to give me a rough idea. And if the noise is pretty bad, I get a fair number of errors. I get 41 errors every thousand bits. If the noise is the same as the signal, I get six errors in a thousand bits. And if the noise is, let's say, six dB, uh, I'm getting less than ten to the minus three. So, uh, in our case, we've got five to eight dB. So we're going to have better than ten to the minus three, and that's without any coding. If I add Viterbi coding and Reed Solomon coding, I'm going to have fairly good performance. So I could say then, with uh, our signal of 5 to 8 dB, we're going to have, we're, we'll be able to see uh, pictures successfully. So that's basically what I'm saying there. Over here, I'm just going through the setup of the Raspberry Pi loading goes to uh, the GOES tools. Uh, the two excellent articles I've referenced here, reference 3 and 4, one is from rtlsdr.com, the other is from Alexi on GitHub, and they, uh, they've really nailed this down. So basically, I'm just following their, um, their articles. When I, I had an old uh, SD card sitting around, micro SD card, it had a whole bunch of stuff on it. I couldn't clean it up completely with Disk Manager in Windows 10, so I had to go to the DOS utility disk partition. <clears throat> you just have to be careful using that because if you pick the wrong disk, you could wipe out your laptop. So just be careful using disk part. So I used that to clean up the SD card, and then I loaded Raspberry Pi Lite. Uh, and then I put putty, putty on my laptop. Oh, yeah, I also... Um, uh, you have to get into when you first load uh, Raspberry Pi Lite, you have to go in there and enable SSH so you can get into your laptop. Uh, you, so you can get into your Raspberry Pi over the net. Um, that's my uh, putty setup. Uh, once Ghost tools are in, you can use RTL test to see if your SDR is there. That's what that is. And then finally, um, there's my uh, output of Ghost tools receive. And you can see over here when my Viterbi area, area error falls below 180, I've got no packets dropped. So that says that I, I should be able to uh, receive good pictures. So in our next video, 
what we're going to do is we're actually going to have, I have a permanent mechanical mount on my balcony and we're going to get some pictures hopefully.